Welcome to the Tech Meme Ride Home for Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. I'm Brian McCullough. Today, we've said before that Elon owns the thing, so if he decides to change the Twitter logo to a Shiba Inu, you know, why not? Apple kind of sort of bites the bullet on layoffs. What's going on with the Apple Weather app? Do we want universities to call the use of ChatGPT plagiarism? And data on the corporate takeover of AI development. Here's what you missed today in the world of tech. I think I used this joke recently, but the dream of 2021 is alive at Twitter. Because as much as things have changed since the go-go times, I guess some things remain the same. Dogecoin's price spiked more than 25% after Twitter replaced its bird logo with a Doge image. Quoting TechCrunch. The particular dog image, a Shiba Inu, corresponds with the logo of the Dogecoin blockchain and cryptocurrency. Normally, the swapping out or addition of an icon inside an app is not news. In this case, cryptocurrency investors sent the value of Dogecoin sharply higher in the wake of the inclusion of its logo in Twitter's app. In short, the social media services update has led to a pump. The greater context for this latest bit of Twitter silliness is that the owner of the social media service, Elon Musk, is in court over Dogecoin, looking to dismiss a massive suit relating to the cryptocurrency. In that suit, Musk's lawyers recently called Dogecoin, quote, a legitimate cryptocurrency that continues to hold a market cap of nearly $10 billion, end quote, arguing that Musk's tweets thereof were just that. We suppose that this app update is part of Musk's general view on the litigation, end quote. Because for other things that were big in 2021, the narrative has definitively broken at this point. Spotify is shutting down its Clubhouse-style audio app, Spotify Live, which was previously called Locker Room, and which was acquired as part of its 57 million Euro Betty Labs deal back in March of 2021. Quoting Musical.ly, Locker Room was a sports-focused version of Clubhouse, the social audio app that was creating a huge buzz in tech circles at the time. Spotify paid 57 million euro for Betty Labs in March 2021, promising to, quote, evolve and expand Locker Room into an enhanced live audio experience for a wider range of creators and fans, end quote. The app was rebranded Spotify Green Room and relaunched in June that year, with Spotify commissioning several radio-style live shows focusing on sports, music, entertainment, and lifestyle. It was renamed again in April 2022 to Spotify Live and integrated into Spotify's main app. However, by the end of 2022, Clubhouse's star had waned, while Facebook, which characteristically had rushed to launch its own version, had pulled back from live audio. Meanwhile, Spotify canceled several of Spotify Live's original shows. Now, Spotify Live is itself being canceled, with users being delivered the news this afternoon. 57 million euro is a lot to pay for an app that you shut down two years later, even if you do learn some useful lessons along the way. Spotify Live's demise will be seen as a setback for the streaming services' ambitions to expand beyond music into other kinds of audio as part of its long-term plan to compete with radio for listeners and advertising budgets alike." End quote. Yeah, these are the sort of headlines we get in 2023. Documents seen by CNBC suggest that Google is cutting back on perks like fitness classes, but also nickel and diming things like tape, staplers, and the frequency of staff laptop replacements. Non-engineers, for example, will get assigned a Chromebook by default going forward. Quote, Google's finance chief, Ruth Porritt, recently said in a rare company-wide email that the company is making cuts to employee services. Quote, these are big multi-year efforts, Porat said in a Friday email titled, our company-wide OKR on durable savings, end quote. Elements of the email were previously reported by the Wall Street Journal. One of the company's important objectives for 2023 is to, quote, deliver durable savings through improved velocity and efficiency, Porat said in the email. All PAs and functions are working towards this, she said, referring to product areas. OKR stands for Objectives and Key Results. Porat referred to the year 2008 twice in her email. We've been here before, the email stated. Back in 2008, our expenses were growing faster than our revenue. We improved machine utilization, narrowed our real estate investments, tightened our belt on T&E budgets, cafes, micro-kitchens, and mobile phone usage, and removed the hybrid vehicle subsidiary, end quote. 
Among the equipment changes, Google is pausing refreshes for laptops, desktop PCs, and monitors. It's also, quote, changing how often equipment is replaced, according to internal documents viewed by CNBC. Google employees who are not in engineering roles but require a new laptop will receive a Chromebook by default. Chromebooks are laptops made by Google and use a Google-based operating system called Chrome OS. It's a shift from the range of offerings such as Apple MacBooks that were previously available to employees. It also provides the best opportunity across all our managed devices to prevent external compromise, one document about the laptop changes said. An employee can no longer expense mobile phones if one is available internally, the document also stated, and employees will need director or above approval if they need an accessory that costs more than $1,000 and isn't available internally. Under a section titled Desktops and Workstations, the company said CloudTop, the company's internal virtual workstation, will be the default desktop for Googlers. In February, CNBC reported the company asked its cloud employees and partners to share desks on alternating days and are expected to transition to relying on CloudTop for their workstations. Google employees have also noticed some more extreme cutbacks to office supplies in recent weeks. Staplers and tape are no longer being provided to print stations company-wide as part of a cost-effectiveness initiative, according to a separate internal facilities directive viewed by CNBC. We have been asked to pull all tape slash dispensers throughout the building, a San Francisco facility directive stated. If you need a stapler or tape, the receptionist desk has them to borrow, end quote. And Apple has kind of sort of become the last major tech company to bite the bullet on layoffs. Sources are telling Bloomberg that Apple plans to eliminate a small number of its corporate retail staff, marking its first known job cuts since embarking on a belt-tightening effort back in 2022. Quoting from Bloomberg, The company is shedding positions in what it calls its development and preservation teams, said the people who asked not to be identified because the move hasn't been announced. Those groups are responsible for the construction and upkeep of Apple retail stores and other facilities around the world. While the number of positions being eliminated couldn't be ascertained and is likely very small, the move represents a new step for the world's most valuable company whose peers have been slashing their ranks in the face of a shaky economy and sluggish consumer spending. Apple is positioning the move as a streamlining effort rather than layoffs. It told employees that the changes were designed to improve upkeep of stores globally and that the company will provide support to affected workers. The iPhone maker has largely held off on corporate layoffs even as it trims budgets and pairs back much of its contractor workforce, including on-contract engineers, recruiters, and security guards. The company previously cut corporate jobs before the pandemic when it eliminated a couple hundred members of its self-driving car division. Some management roles are also being eliminated. While those employees could be rehired as so-called individual contributors, they may not have the same compensation, according to the people. In a few instances, some employees are exempt and will keep their jobs without needing to reapply. Apple had 164,000 employees as of September, when its last fiscal year ended. The company didn't expand its workforce as quickly as many big tech companies during the pandemic, decreasing the need for major layoffs. Its peers, including Amazon and Alphabet's Google, have cut tens of thousands of jobs, end quote. Oregon State University is proud to be a sponsor of the Tech Meme Ride Home. Ranked as the number three best university in the country for solving climate change, Oregon State makes seeking solutions a priority, going the farthest lengths to help the earth and all living creatures thrive. Their creative minds, research knowledge, and drive inspire them to generate ideas no one else has. Oregon State will never stop doing the hard work. They will continue exploring, creating, and taking action on the issues that matter most to their students and community and build a better world for future generations. With nearly 200 degree programs, Oregon State has a path to the career and future you always wanted. They've been ranked number two in the world for the study of forestry and number three in the world for the study of oceanography. And Oregon State's top-ranked e-campus offers 40-plus online degree programs, maximum flexibility, and innovative courses taught by OSU faculty. Discover more at OregonState.com. Dot edu. That's Oregon State. Dot edu. Let's say you've been stewing about a health problem you've been having. 
And so you almost resort to texting your group chat to get your friends' opinions. Well, you're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice in your group chat, but you can find it from a doctor on ZocDoc. Thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc stand ready to help you. They listen like a friend and give you the expert care you need. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. No more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favorite doctor you haven't met yet. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient-reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. Go to ZocDoc.com slash TechMeme and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash TechMeme. ZocDoc dot com slash TechMeme. Apple is confirming what users, including myself, have been seeing, an issue with its weather app on iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and macOS, ongoing for over five hours as of this morning, though some users, again, including myself, have had issues for over a week now. Quoting Apple Insider, Users of Apple's weather app around the world have periodically been getting blank screens as no data is available. It appears to have been a worldwide issue, though not necessarily for all users in all regions. Currently, most weather data is back, although at times the chosen city has to be reloaded before forecasts appear correctly. Apple's official system status site acknowledges that there is an issue. However, it claims that the impact is now solely affecting users in Alaska. It's unlikely that Apple gets all of its weather data from a single data provider in Alaska, so presumably the system status reflects only the current issue and that it has been improving overnight. That appears to reflect how certain regions are now getting forecasts, at least if the weather app is forced to reload a city's data. However, if it's correct that it's a data outage, it would suggest that there have been multiple such outages at data providers around the world. According to Apple, the issues began at 11 p.m. Eastern on Monday, end quote. I would like to take this opportunity to remind Apple that their weather app sucks generally and that they killed the best weather app ever made, which was Dark Sky. Bring that back, please. Anti-plagiarism software maker Turnitin has launched a service to detect AI-generated text in academia, claiming 98% confidence compared to OpenAI's 26%. And yet, academia is a little wary of this new tool. Quoting the Financial Times, Turnitin, which is already used by more than 10,000 educational institutions worldwide, is launching a service on Tuesday saying, quote, Educators told us that being able to accurately detect AI-written text is their first priority right now, said TuneIn Chief Executive Chris Karen. They need to be able to detect AI with very high certainty to assess the authenticity of a student's work and determine how to best engage with them, end quote. The launch has proved contentious, though. Some institutions, including Cambridge and other members of the Russell Group, the body that represents leading UK universities, have said they will opt out of the new service according to people familiar with the decision. Universities are worried the tool may falsely accuse students of cheating, involves handing student data to a private company, and prevents people from experimenting with new technologies such as generative AI. The concerns have been widely held, one person familiar with its discussion said. The Russell Group declined to comment. Charles Knight, assistant director at consultancy Advance HE, said lecturers were concerned that they would have no way to investigate why essays had been flagged as being written by AI. In a single university, an error rate of 1% would mean hundreds of students wrongly accused of cheating, he added, with little recourse to appeal. It's a black box, he said. We've got no idea what those results mean, and we aren't able to have a look at how the software came to those conclusions, end quote. Turnitin did not immediately respond to a request for comment to the concerns raised about the AI detection tool, but the company said in a statement about the tool's launch that the technology had been in development for years and provided resources, quote, to help the education community navigate and manage it, end quote. And finally today, some interesting data points about this new AI, I guess we could call it an industry now, because a new report sort of shows that AI is entering into an era of corporate control. 
According to Stanford's AI Index, in 2022, industry produced 32 notable machine learning models compared to academia's mere three. Now, weirdly, global private investment in AI also fell 26.7% year over year, quoting The Verge. The 2023 AI Index, compiled by researchers from Stanford University as well as AI companies including Google, Anthropic, and Hugging Face, suggests that the world of AI is entering a new phase of development. Over the past year, a large number of AI tools have gone mainstream, from chatbots like ChatGPT to image-generating software like MidJourney. But decisions about how to deploy this technology and how to balance risk and opportunity lie firmly in the hands of corporate players. The AI Index states that for many years, academia led the way in developing state-of-the-art AI systems, but industry now has firmly taken over. In 2022, there were 32 significant industry-produced machine learning models compared to just three produced by academia, it says. This is mostly due to the increasingly large resource demands in terms of data, staff, and computing power required to create such applications. In 2019, for example, OpenAI created GPT-2, an early large language model, or LLM, the same class of application used to power ChatGPT and Microsoft's Bing chatbot. GPT-2 costs roughly $50,000 to train and contains 1.5 billion parameters, a metric that tracks a model's size and relative sophistication. Skip forward to 2022, and Google created its own state-of-the-art LLM called Palm. This costs an estimated $8 million to train and contains 540 billion parameters, making it 360 times larger than GPT-2 and 160 times more expensive. AI development's increasing resource requirements firmly shift the balance of power toward corporate players. Many experts in the AI world worry that the incentives of the business world will also lead to dangerous outcomes as companies rush out products and sideline safety concerns in an effort to outmaneuver rivals. This is one reason many experts are currently calling for a slowdown or even a pause in AI development, as with the open letter signed last week by figures including Elon Musk. Other highlights from the report, private investment in AI decreased for the first time in a decade in 2022. Global private investment in AI has been climbing for years, but decreased by 26.7% from 2021 to $91.9 billion in 2022. Side editor's note here, I bet that number is going to go way up in 2023. Continuing to quote, Training big AI models has environmental costs. A 2022 paper estimates that training a large AI language model called Bloom emitted 25 times as much carbon as that of flying one passenger from New York to San Francisco and back. By comparison, OpenAI's GPT-3 was estimated to have a carbon cost 20 times that of Bloom. AI can potentially help reduce emissions, though. In 2022, Google's subsidiary DeepMind created an AI system called Bee Cooler that reduced energy consumption by 12.7% in a three-month experiment in the company's data centers by optimizing cooling procedures. It's not clear if Google ever adopted this system more widely. Chinese people are more hopeful about AI than Americans. An Ipsos survey in 2022 found that 78% of Chinese respondents agreed with the statement that, quote, products and services using AI have more benefits than drawbacks. Chinese citizens were most enthusiastic about AI, followed by respondents in Saudi Arabia, 76%, and India, 71%. U.S. respondents were among the least enthusiastic of those surveyed, with only 35% agreeing with the above statement, end quote. And by the time that he arrives, he will read, I have lied. He'll go drinking to his friends, to his foes. But drinking is the devil that tears one apart, leaving memories of what should have been and wasn't. It's good to be on the road back home again, again. Talk to you tomorrow.